Live from KSAT 12, the night beat starts right now. A bill blocked in a deadline nearing before a government shutdown. The timeline lawmakers are racing against and the impact that shutdown could have for millions of Americans. And Pfizer working on a new treatment for COVID-19, the pandemic pill they're now working on coming up. But first, calling for an intervention. A South San ISD board member is calling for the Texas Education Agency to act swiftly to rectify the downward spiral that he says that school district appears to be headed down. One year into his new position, the superintendent and the board of trustees find themselves at odds. A similar pattern played out with the previous board and superintendent. He resigned two years ago. The district is 90% economically disadvantaged. That's a concern for one educational professional who says the students and teachers will be the ones who ultimately suffer. The night team's Patty Santos with how parents and taxpayers can play a role in a solution. I think everybody um, has responsibility when a school district is failing. Um, and so it's convenient to pin it on one group, um, but really, you know, voters need to pay attention to who it is they're electing the school board. David DeMatthews, UT Austin education professor, says the South and ISD community has the key to solving the ongoing saga of school board problems. At a certain point, hiring and firing and paying out contracts, you know, it kind of, it turns into some fiscal irresponsibility. South and ISD was under the oversight of a conservator from 2016 to 2018, following a previous investigation of her board decisions. In 2019, another investigation was opened that found the board operated outside its authority by contacting district staff to discuss district business. The investigation also says the board contacted vendors and consultants without the superintendent's knowledge. It sounds like there's a lot of um, wasted time, wasted resources uh, that ultimately is going to impact the, the education of children. He says in general, statewide, it's not uncommon for politics and agendas to get in the way of school board functions. Just one year into the job, Superintendent Mark Puig and some board members seem to be at odds. A similar pattern of what led to the previous superintendent, Alejandro Flores, to resign after less than a year on the job. Puig is the seventh superintendent for South San in 10 years. Dr. Puig is what's best for kids and he's what we need here. My hope is that the TEA will move quickly and protect our superintendent. Trustee Gilbert Rodriguez, an outspoken critic of how the board majority is handling business, has presented his own complaints to the TEA. Board President Ernesto Arellano Jr. says the board majority is working together to mitigate through issues. If and when the trustees that are in the minority decide that they want to get on the train, there's room on the train when they decide that that's what they want to do. But until then, the train will move on. The longest tenured trustee reassures parents the superintendent's job is not at risk. When it comes to our kids, they are our priorities and this district will move forward and we will succeed. Some parents admit they're not as involved as they should be and worry about the future of the district. Yeah, it's just like all like a domino effect. Tendremos que estar más informados de lo que está sucediendo. And the TEA is expected to announce the placement of the monitor soon. Once a monitor is placed, only the Commissioner of Education has the authority to remove them or expand their area of responsibility. The district is responsible for paying the monitor $85 an hour plus travel expenses. Steve? We'll continue to follow that situation there. Thank you, Patty. It's not if it will happen, but when. CPS Energy anticipating a rate hike of about 10%. That could change as the utility considers several factors. CPS Energy CEO and President Paula Gold Williams says the February freeze and the $1 billion of gas and energy bills that the utility was hit with are part of that decision. Other factors are with the utility's core operations and investments. Now we're not done evaluating, fine tuning, but in general, I would tell you, we believe that there might be a rate increase that we will come forward with. She points out this would be the first increase in eight years. Gold Williams says a rate increase probably would not appear on your bill until early spring, but the CPS board and the San Antonio City Council would have to approve it first. 
Could a pill prevent COVID-19 symptoms? It's a question that Pfizer hopes to answer as it pushes forward with getting additional vaccine approval. The company is testing a new antiviral pill to learn if it could fight COVID-19 early after diagnosis. Pfizer is also trying to learn if the medication can limit the transmission to people in a patient's household. Several other companies, including Merck, also working on similar clinical trials. Results could come as soon as late fall or winter. Meantime, Pfizer submitted data on its vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. It's expected to be reviewed in the coming days with authorization expected as early as the end of October. That dose for kids would be about a third of what adults get. Pfizer already has its approval for COVID-19 booster shots. President Joe Biden receiving his third dose today. He's one of more than two and a half million Americans who got their booster shot since mid-August. Those who were eligible recommended to get that booster at least six months after their second shot. Pfizer is the only company in the U.S. to have the three dose series for most people so far. Moderna set to get approval for its booster shot in the coming weeks. Regulators are expecting data from Johnson and Johnson before deciding if that single dose vaccine should get a second dose booster. A strike to save San Antonio Symphony. The last time symphony musicians called a strike was in 1985. This after management known as the Symphony Society of San Antonio proposed cuts to staff and decreasing benefits. That would mean reducing the 72 full time positions on the symphony to 42 full time positions. 26 other positions would be considered part time. Musicians say part time positions would not include health care benefits. Melly, Mary Ellen Gorey is a musician with the symphony and says all of the musicians had to compete to earn a spot with the San Antonio Symphony. Some even moved their families to San Antonio. I've been playing with the symphony 33 years. We own homes here. Many of us are raising families here. This is our city. This is our home. We're part of it. And the arts matter to us not only because it's our job, but because this is our home. The Symphony Society of San Antonio says they declared an impasse in negotiations. They expect the symphony season opener to continue on October 29th. It is unclear how long the strike will last. Right now, the federal government remains on course toward a shutdown. As we take a live look at the Capitol tonight, pass, uh, Congress must pass funding. A bill in four days. Tonight, Senate Republicans blocking a bill the House passed. The measure would avert the shutdown and raise the debt ceiling. Both political parties responsible for piling on debt, but Republican Mitch McConnell rejected the measure because of that debt limit. Economist Mark Zandi says the shutdown could impact jobs, salaries for military members, and those who receive Social Security. If you get a check from the federal government one way or the other, uh, you may not get that check. Congress will need to reach an agreement before midnight Friday to avoid a shutdown. It Texas lawmakers keeping the election in mind as they plan how to divide the districts for the congressional map. Republican legislators releasing their first draft of how they hope the lines will be drawn. The Texas Tribune pointed out the draft protects incumbents while reducing the number of districts where black and Hispanic residents make up a majority of eligible voters. The state's current congressional delegation has 36 seats. 23 are currently Republicans and 13 are Democrats. The new congressional map would give Texas 38 seats and 40 electoral votes in the future presidential elections. The first draft will likely be challenged and changed before it's passed by the state legislature and signed into law. You can read more about the proposal right now on KSAT.com. Changes on the way for San Antonio this week. A live look outside tonight, right now, where skies appear to be calm. But what's expected later in the week? Meteorologist Adam Kasky keeping an eye on the increasing chances of rain, my friend. Yes, I like what I see here. We have some promising and encouraging rain chances on the way right now outside, just partly cloudy, and we've got some showers west of the Rio Grande. They're generally falling apart as they move toward the border. The big picture here is this big swirl in the upper levels over New Mexico. That's our first of two upper level disturbances. That's going to help stir things up, get some showers and thunderstorms generated. We're looking at good rain chances this week, but it's going to ebb and flow. So don't expect continuous rain, just spurts of rain, some of which could be heavy. I'm going to time it out for you more and let you know when we have a real spikes in those rain chances coming right up.
Thank you, Adam. Some might think it's too early to count down to Christmas. Coming up on the night, why experts say the time to start shopping is now. And the end of a chapter for one of San Antonio's largest school districts. The advice Superintendent Pedro Martinez is handing down to his successor. And after decades of suspicion and allegations, the case against R. Kelly leading to a verdict. Prosecutors reacting to the ruling and what's now expected. Next on the Night Beat. Weeks of testimony, two days of deliberations. R&B singer R. Kelly found guilty of racketeering in his sex trafficking trial. That verdict read in a Brooklyn federal court today. Kelly, wearing a mask, sat motionless. Prosecutors detailed how the singer used his fame and network to sexually abuse women, girls, and boys, and engaged in sex trafficking involving six women, including the late singer Aaliyah, who died in a plane crash in 2001. To the victims in this case, your voices were heard and justice was finally served. When sentenced, Kelly faces a mandatory minimum sentence of 10 years imprisonment and up to life in prison. Kelly's attorneys plan to appeal. We got some new images coming in from Mexico. This is just across the border from Del Rio where Haitian migrants are currently staying. This is in Acuna. Several organizations teaming up to create this makeshift shelter there. That includes churches in our area. Farrell Clark actually sent in these images. He's working with Uniting America Outreach to deliver needed supplies to the Haitian migrants there as they prepare to seek asylum. Back here at home, the San Antonio Independent School District closing a chapter. Superintendent Pedro Martinez completed his final day in the lead role before moving to his hometown of Chicago to lead the district there. Martinez encouraging his successor to stay the course, even if it means challenging the governor. The district is mandating masks for its students, teachers and staff required to get the COVID-19 vaccine. We have parents and teachers on our side. And so when you have that, um, you know, that's about as good as it gets, especially when you're dealing with a global pandemic. Martinez also hopes the district will continue to build on its success for its students. He will now become the first Latino leader of the Chicago Public Schools, Dr. Robert Jacklich will lead SAISD as its interim superintendent. We are 89 days away from Christmas, but the pandemic could be pushing the holiday hustle to happen even earlier this year. A global supply chain mess is making many items a bit more difficult to find and more expensive. Labor shortages and an ongoing computer chip crisis aren't helping either. Costco is chartering ships and renting containers to move inventory between Asia, the U.S. and Canada. The warehouse company is already dealing with delays in shipments for toys, computers, tablets and video games. I think we're going to be struggling with it well into next year until we can really um, smooth out some of these bottlenecks. The CEO of Mattel says its toy is also being impacted. Getting ahead of the rush and shopping now could be key in getting items checked off your list. Keep in mind the higher costs are also expected for Christmas trees and decorations. Live cam outside right now, 82 degrees and uh, the humidity back today. Uh -huh, but, but still, I mean, the temperatures aren't that bad. No, and we need that humidity. Yes, we do. Right? That's right. He, That's what my meteorologist friends yes. tell me. It's good to have that <laughs> this humidity. This guy we know who's in the know. Yes, it's good for rain chances, especially when you add to it more humidity up above us thousands of feet and tens of thousands of feet above us. It's good to have that extra humidity that's going to be rolling in as well. So rain chances are promising this week, but it's going to be moments of rain. So spurts of rain that we're expecting where not everybody's going to get to showers when we see that activity on the radar, but we should have good coverage overall across the entire week and into the upcoming weekend. And yeah, of course, the humidity is going to remain in place. We were spoiled for the middle and end of last week. Now it's back to reality. But let's take a look at the big picture. We talked about this, the big swirl over New Mexico. That's our first of two upper disturbances that'll be slowly moving their way through our area, really just to the north of us, but close enough to help stir things up. So let's go to our future cast starting with tomorrow. Tomorrow night is our first chance of real showers and storms and the first spike in our rain chances. We'll start the day. Here you go. 8 a.m. Low clouds in place. It may look like it could rain at any moment. 
but I don't think we'd see anything more than a sprinkle here and there. Otherwise, a mixture of sun and clouds throughout the day into the afternoon. Yeah, a few pop up showers could develop, but I think they'll be fairly few and far between. Once we get closer to sunset, this here is six o'clock closer to sunset, which is just after seven. We'll probably see more organization of some showers and thunderstorms just across our area and then increasing rain chances as we go through the night tomorrow night. So during the day tomorrow should be fine. You work outdoors you need to get some work done. You should be OK. It's tomorrow night when we're anticipating what could be some areas of heavy rainfall. So here's a way to look at our rain chances this week. We've got daytime rain chances and nighttime rain chances. Daytime tomorrow, not a big chance. Nighttime fairly scattered to even widespread showers and thunderstorms, some of which could be heavy. We'll see another peak or spike in those rain chances Thursday night through pretty much all day Friday and then again throughout the day on Saturday. The easiest way to keep track of this, honestly, download the KSAT Weather Authority app, enable the notifications, and we will keep you updated on the situation as it continues to basically the rain comes and goes and those chances uh, increase and then decrease period, you know, off and on throughout the week. As for rainfall potential, obviously we could use the rain, starting to get a little crusty and dry out there. We could see areas of five to seven inches, no problem, between tomorrow night all the way through Saturday. OK, there is that potential and it could lead to some areas of flash flooding later in the week and to start the weekend. 91, that was our high temperature today. We started the day at 65 right now, 70s to low 80s. Divine 81 along with Canyon Lake, Bulverde at 80, Converse 80 degrees and 82 at the International Airport in town. Del Rio 89, some upper 70s though. Ozona in Dryden and even Victoria at 77. So tomorrow morning we'll start the day in the low to mid 70s. Hill Country, However, you'll be in the upper 60s by the afternoon. We make it back into the low to mid 90s, so it's going to look and feel a lot like today. It's this time tomorrow night where we need to be watching the skies and on the lookout for what could become a few isolated, stronger storms. You know, later on tomorrow night, we could have some stronger storms mixed into the equation. But during the day, partly cloudy, 92 degrees. And then after dark, we see those rain chances start to climb and it could even become fairly widespread into very early Wednesday morning and you see those off and on scattered showers and thunderstorms, some of which are at night, some of which are during the day. We'll keep you updated on air and especially on our KSAT Weather Authority app. All right. Thank you, Adam. All right. It seemed like a pretty loose atmosphere hmm. at Spurs Media Day today. Greg. Yeah, there's a lot of young faces, new yeah. faces on board, but you can tell the team gets along with each other. They're young guns. They're eager to start the season. They had their first day at Media Day and Spurs <laughs> camp opens up today. Yeah, there they go. A photo bomb right out of the gate. Also, we come back. The UTSA Roadrunners want their early success to be no flash in the pan when we come back. San Antonio Spurs tipped off their 2021 training camp today with media day at their practice facility. That's where Greg Popovich begins his 26th season as a head coach with as many as eight new players on the roster that were not there last year. But there are familiar faces returning. First, Manu Ginobili was there today for his new role as special advisor to basketball operations. So are DeJounte Murray and Derek White, who had his press conference interrupted by a teammate. I've been here for a while. I know what's expected, so... Um, just try to get to know people outside of basketball and then try to help them out any way I can. So um, it's been fun and, and we got a bunch of new guys, so it's been cool just to get knowing these people, except Lonnie. What do you really think about Keldon Johnson, though? KJ? Um, I mean, he's amazing. I mean, his energy, his. Uh, you got any words back there? Overrated. <laughs> That's why you my guy, yo. Hey, Lonnie. See me outside real quick. I'd... Um, all right, now that he's gone, um, he's annoying, talks too much, won't leave me alone. There you go. There's a lot more to cover. For that, we bring in our Andrew Seeley. Thanks for reminding me that he's on the team, because I should know everybody that's on the team. 
New faces are everywhere, and the Spurs have officially bought into the youth movement. 27-year-old Derek White and 25-year-old DeJounte Murray are now the longest-tenured Spurs on the current roster. But there's genuine excitement to see how this group will grow throughout the season. It's exciting uh, for me personally to be able to help people, try to show show them what I had went through and help them any way I can. So um, it's definitely different from the past years. When the summer started and you see every face in the gym to now, you know, training uh, open gym to training camp, you know, just see everybody asking questions, having fun, competing. Uh, you know, just, just having fun with one another. We all love to play with each other. We all love to be around each other on and off the court. Um, so just a lot of excitement. You know, there's a lot of opportunity on the court for, as teammates. And, um, you know, we have a lot to prove. You know, we're used to being underdogs. We're used to uh, fighting and having that grit and that grunt. One of the players that most exemplifies that mantra is newly minted Olympic champion Keldon Johnson. Without a lot of seasoned NBA veterans on the team, how does Keldon plan on attacking this year? You know, lean by example. You know, I feel like me, DJ, Derek, uh, we stay in the gym. We, we uh, try to perfect our craft. I feel like we're ready to go out there and compete. You know, I uh, feel like we all on the same page and we got each other's back. And I feel like we're going to go out there every night and, and give it everything we got. COVID-19 protocol should be less of an issue this year. Coach Pop did confirm that the team is 100% vaccinated vaccinated and ready to go. From the Spurs practice facility, Andrew Seeley, KSAT 12 Sports. Thank you, Andrew. The UTSA Roadrunners have a chance to start a season 5-0 and for the first time in team history when they host UNLV this Saturday in the Alamo Dome. That's after they scored their biggest comeback in school history by storming back from a 21-0 deficit, only to win the game in the closing seconds off the foot of Hunter Duplessis, who booted the game-winning 42-yard field goal with no time on the clock. For that, he earned his second Conference USA Special Teams Player of the Week award in the 31-28 victory. Head coach Jeff Trailer doesn't want this to be a flash in the pan. We want this university to be what we know it should be. We've got great kids. It's just a neat place. It's, it's just a, a very multicultural city with a bunch of humble, good people that deserve a great sports program to cheer for. And I know we have the Spurs, we've got other things, but man, this is the state of Texas. This is a football state. And I love hoops as much as anybody, but we need to get this thing going. And you can help by showing up this Saturday in the Alamo Dome for the 5 p.m. kickoff. The Cowboys on Monday Night Football next. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Dak Prescott back in Cowboys AT&T Stadium for the first game at home since shattering his ankle back in week five of the 2020 season. And he picked up where he left off against the NFC East rivals of Philadelphia Eagles. He marches the Cowboys in a 75-yard opening drive, just six plays capped off by this Ezekiel at one-yard TD. 7-0 Cowboys following a strip sack in the end zone for a touchdown by the Eagles. Cowboys answered Dak to Dalton Schultz for the 19-yard touchdown. The Cowboys are up now 14-7. Then in the second quarter, another long drive. 13 plays, 65 yards, capped off by another Zeke touchdown, this time from three yards out and following a miss extra point, it's 20 to 7 at the half. The second half barely underway when Trayvon Diggs made good on his promise of more interceptions this year. Only this time he returns it for a 60-yard pick six and 27 to 7 lead in the early in the third. Cowboys win it 41-21 and prove to 2-1 and one on the season. That is a huge win for the Cowboys at home against a division rival. At the same time, Dak had 238 yards, three touchdowns. Ezekiel Elliott had two touchdowns we showed you and at the same time 95 yards rushing a very balanced attack tonight and it paid off with a huge win absolutely yeah. they've taken control of the NFC East yes which is not hard to do. which is, <laughs> for whatever that's worth yes. thanks Greg yeah. we'll be right back Take a look at this. A herd of goats on the loose in Atlanta. Video shows the goats walking around, enjoying some nice weather, stacking on shrubbery in the Buckhead neighborhood. Police say the goats were brought in to eat weeds at a nearby grocery store. Somehow they got loose. Wanted a bigger menu, maybe? Yeah. Animal control then called in to help round up the goats safely. Clean up on aisle four. <laughs> We have some good rain chances this week, first of which is tomorrow night on into early Wednesday, and then we'll see some off and on activity periodically and really promising at least in terms of accumulations because we're starting to dry out a little bit and the aquifer could use a boost. Notice those highs near 80 Friday, Saturday. That does it for the night beat. Don't forget, good morning San Antonio starts at 430. Good night.